Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to this homeschooling naturopath. If you are new around here, my name is Hannah and I'm a homeschooling mom of three little girls who were 10, 8, and 6, and I'm also a fully qualified naturopath living and working in New Zealand. On this channel, I share content related to homeschooling, homemaking, motherhood, as well as some naturopathic info throughout some of my content here. Today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys all about how the first term of our 2024 school year has gone, how our curriculum has been going, how all the girls' extracurriculars have been going, and all of that type of good stuff. So stay tuned if you're interested to hear about how our first term went. <laughs> So I've got a lot to share with you guys today. I, I feel like it's gonna be a chatty one and I'm gonna really try not to get too far off topic. If you are not new around here, you know that I do tend to do that, but that's just because I love talking about homeschool and I love talking about curriculum and it's just my favorite thing to do and it's really easy to go off on tangents and just carry on talking about these things for hours. But I'm gonna try to keep this video short. So starting off with, um, our scheduling. So earlier in the year I shared all of our videos in relation to the girls um, curriculum, all of their independent subjects as well as our family subjects as well as scheduling and I'm gonna put all of those videos down below for you guys to check out if you are interested. So what I want to report on first and share with you guys is that that new schedule, that yearly layout that I um, put in place for us where we now have six six weeks six week terms um, has been amazing. It has been amazing. It has really changed my mentality about our homeschool and I mean you know we're only still six weeks in to this homeschooling year. We've still got a long way to go but it just feels like such a weight off my shoulders you know like three weeks into the term we were halfway through our school term already and I was still super excited and still you know just ready to go and so were the girls and it's it's just it's been working out beautifully and I'm really excited to see how the rest of the year goes with this new schedule in place because so far it has been wonderful so I'm taking this week to just rest and chill uh, we still have all of our homeschool commitments on we've got a lot going on at the moment and the girls do still have sport so we're not like going away on you know like a vacation or anything like that but just taking the week to just chill before we get back into it for another six weeks um I'm also this week I've challenged myself to not go to the supermarket so typically I order groceries on a Saturday night and then pick them up on a Sunday today's Sunday as I'm filming this and I've said no I'm not gonna buy groceries for the week I'm gonna see how we go I'm gonna shop my freezer which I did this morning I found so much meat so much stuff and so I'm gonna meal plan with what we have. I might have to pop to the fruit and veggie shop at some point but that's my goal for this week while we are off to just chill and recover and come back into our next six weeks feeling a lot more motivation than um, you know I was feeling last year for homeschool. So I'm gonna move on now into our extracurriculars before I get into all of our curriculum that I've got up behind me. Um, so as far as extracurriculars go, this term we have been very busy. So the actual um, only sport that my girls were signed up for this term was dance. They have just really found a love for it. Uh, my oldest daughter has even started teaching some of our um, homeschool friends how to dance on our park meetup days and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, they've just been really thriving in that and they have expressed that they want to continue it into the coming terms. Usually around this time of year, uh, rugby begins for us. Rugby in years past has been a huge part of our lives um, for the entire duration of our winter. <laughs> um, but this year the girls have kind of expressed not wanting to play and I'm certainly not a type of mother who will force a sport on them. If they don't want to play, they do not have to play it. Uh, but I mean, I do require that they choose something. Um, but as long as they carry on with doing dance, that is enough for me and I'm really happy that they're enjoying it so much. It's so beautiful to see them running out of their dance class and just running over to me with huge smile on their faces and you can just tell their buckets are so full after being in dance class so it, yeah it's really really beautiful um, and then as far as our homeschool group stuff goes we have been very busy this term like there has been so much going on first of all 
You guys know if you follow over here that I started up a book club last year with our homeschooling group and that has been going beautifully. We had our first book club meet up for the year at the end of February and that was for the book Holes and oh my goodness the the families really went all out with that book club party. I, yeah I call it a book club party. You know we get together and we have a celebration of the book and the parents really went all out with the snacks. Uh, one mom made onion soup, another mom made sploosh, and they, like there was just so much onion and peach stuff. It was really, really cool. Um, and that was really great. All the kids had a lot of fun with that. Uh, for the month of March, we read Because of Wind Dixie. And the kids didn't really enjoy that book as much. I had a lot of reports back that it was quite boring, which I honestly kind of agreed with. It wasn't my best book choice, and honestly, I, it was kind of the last book I added to our book list. It was like a last minute one because I was out of ideas. Um, so yeah, it, that wasn't the best book choice, but you know, we had our book meetup nonetheless, and again, some of the parents got really involved. We had pickles, we had egg salad sandwiches, one of the moms made dog biscuit shaped um, cookies, which was really cool. Yeah, so the book club has been going great. We're moving on now to Mr. Popper's Penguins, and I, I really hope that that is, um, you know, a more entertaining book for the kids. I have a feeling that it will be. And then another thing I started up this past term is chess club. I've been thinking about starting a chess club for the longest time with our homeschool group. My oldest daughter in particular really loves playing chess. I don't even know where she learned to play chess. It's honestly, it's almost like it's just wired in her brain. I don't, I don't know how, but it's like she was born knowing how to play chess, which is pretty wild <laughs> um, because I've never taught her myself. So anyways, um, so yeah, we started up that chess club. I just, you know, I've been thinking about it for a long time and I just, you know, decided to do it, pick the location, pick the date, and all of these families turn up with all their chess boards and we just have a lot of fun. And it's been really beautiful actually because Quite a few of the parents don't know how to play. They've never played chess and they don't know how to play, but their children know how to play. And so it's actually been really beautiful watching kids teach their parents how to play chess. It's been really cool to watch and I'm excited to see <clears throat> how that grows and changes um, as, you know, as the months go by with our chess club. Another thing we've been doing is surfing lessons. Like I said, you guys, we've been busy. It's a lot. Surfing lessons. Oh my goodness, I am so proud of my girls with their surfing. Um, it was, yeah, seeing them out there catching waves is seriously just the most inspiring thing. Um, I grew up in Southern California, and then after that we moved to Tahiti. I've lived on the beach pretty much my whole life, but I never learned how to surf. And honestly, I think it comes down to feeling like embarrassed or like ashamed of myself, you know, not wanting to go out on the water with a surfboard because, oh, what, what will people think of me? What if they laugh? This and that. My kids, they do not care. They don't care who's watching. They don't care if people laugh. They don't care if they fall. It, and, and like, seriously, it is so inspiring seeing them out there giving it their all and not caring what anyone thinks about it. And I feel like that is how we should all pursue anything that we want to do, you know, not not care what other people think about it. And I wish that I had that strength and that confidence in myself um, because I really would have loved to learn how to surf. And actually, we, I've already discussed with the girls and my husband that we'd really all like to do a family surf lesson. Um, and yeah, I might, I might have a go at learning how to surf now in my adult life and going with that inspiration from my kids that, you know, who cares what people think about it. Park meetups, we've been meeting at the park once a week and that has been so much fun. Arabella has been, like I said, teaching um, some of the girls in the group her, her, like a dance class. She sort of made like a flyer and has all her music planned out and has been teaching them how to, to do her dances and stuff like that. And that's been really, really cool to watch and see her evolve that. This past week, one of the mamas in our group offered to take the group on a foraging walk. This mother is an incredibly amazing wealth of knowledge when it comes to like fungi, mushrooms, lichen, which I didn't I did not know. And I studied a degree of naturopathic medicine for four years, and I genuinely did not know that lichen and moss are two different things. So 
um <clears throat> yeah that was an eye-opener for me because I did not know that um anyway she took us on a foraging walk and taught us all about these different mushrooms in the area and all about their medicinal purposes and all of this really really cool stuff and the, the kids just appreciated that so much and learned so much and um yeah that was really really amazing of her to do and then just um the other day one of the mamas offered to do a first aid course now this mama is um she's actually a doctor she's a general practitioner and she is just so incredible in so many ways um yeah absolutely love her she offered to put together this first aid course for the kids and I she was amazing she had so much patience um most of the kids were not being the most attentive um you know it's quite a hard topic to teach to kids but she had put in so much work and so much effort and just yeah was so patient with them and she's such a good teacher um so that was really really cool just for them to learn about what they could do in an emergency you know my husband travels a lot i am home with my kids by myself most of the time honestly and so it was it was good for them and eye-opening for them to kind of feel confident that like if something happened to me they the way they would kind of know what steps they could take you know to um to help the situation and yeah it was just beautiful she did such a good job of that yeah, I think that's pretty much all we've been up to this past term with our homeschool group. Um, also, my husband ran a rugby skills afternoon where he um, just took the kids and, you know, did some warm-ups with them and taught them some different rugby skills, which I think everyone really enjoyed. And it was much needed um, at that point in the term. And so, yeah, we've just been really busy. Our weeks have been really, really full with... Um, activities and with homeschool meetup stuff almost to the point where like you you know I kind of get a little bit sick of leaving the house so often which I know you know probably sounds a little bit silly uh, maybe for anyone watching who like works outside of the home every day um, but you know as homeschoolers like we generally don't leave the house you know until the afternoon so having something on every single morning or every single day it just it's a lot, particularly when we have a lot of curriculum that I want to get through and trying to stick to our schedule. Um, yeah, it's been a lot, almost to the point, like I said, where it's like, oh, I'm kind of getting sick of seeing these people every day. I need a few days break <laughs> before I can socialize again. Um, so whoever said that homeschoolers were not, were not social, they did not know about our homeschool group because, wow, like... We have been so busy this past term, which is a huge, huge blessing. Um, and yeah, my kids have just made some amazing connections with some of the other kids in the group. And honestly, when we all get together, it's just the kids are all so comfortable with each other. They're all so kind and caring and helpful. And they all just want to, you know, play and have fun together. And there's no you know, it's like, it's very different to like a public school setting or like at least when I was a kid, it's so different to a public school setting when you're around people that you really don't like. We don't really have stuff like that going on in our group. So yeah, it's just fantastic. And you know, for myself as well, like getting to go to all these social things with the other moms, it's just, it's so beautiful. And I'm so, so thankful. I don't think that I would be able to continue homeschooling in the long term were it not for this community of amazing families that that surround us because um yeah it would be so hard to do this on my own without all of these amazing women to lean on um and yeah it's so cool having having women that totally understand every single thing you have to say about homeschool curriculum or you know the struggle with this the struggle with that like we're all in the exact same boat and it's just wonderful to relate to people on that level so all of that being said let's move on now to what you guys probably came here to hear about which is how our homeschool curriculum has been going okie dokie so I'm going to start with our group subjects and again I will link down below all of our curriculum picks videos that, that in fact they're usually always down below in most of my videos um the group subjects pick video I'll put right up at the top my scheduling video will be there as well as all of my girls independent stuff which I will go over next well check those videos out um if you want to have a little bit more 
um, knowledge around what I'm going to be talking about as far as group subjects go. Uh, our main group subjects are history and science. So let me get into it. So for history, we are doing Stir of the World Volume 3. And you guys, this has been going amazing, amazing. If you were around last year and you saw my 2023 curriculum reviews, you'll know that we did Stir of the World Volume 2 last year and it was a big flop. My girls just didn't like that time period, um, like nor did I, to be completely honest. We did not get through that whole book and it was honestly a really big failure and it was something that I was feeling really guilty about, not doing well. But I persevered and I was like, no, you know what? I really love Story of the World and I'm not prepared to give it up. So I moved us in to volume three and you guys, this has been going so well. We do history two days a week. I, I read this on a Wednesday and then on the Thursday, we usually will do an activity related to what we read on Wednesday. The girls uh, made ships last week. We were talking about Henry Hudson and, um, you know, the Hudson River and all of that. That, that was an interesting, that was a, a hard topic to, uh, to read because, yeah, the poor fella. Um, but anyways, and then they made their own ships, which was really cool. And then, you know, they're, all, they're playing with their ships and, you know, have little Lego people on the ships and they're reenacting the whole the whole thing that happened with Henry Hudson and his crew, um, which was a sad ending. But anyways, yeah, this has been going beautifully and I'm so excited to carry on with it and get more in depth on some of the topics that we're gonna be talking about in here. To go along with this, I've also been reading the America's History by the Tuttle Twins and these have been pairing perfectly together. They pretty much, everything we've been talking about in this book is pretty much reiterated in this book, but in a different way, which I've just been loving. I love reading this and then having this as backup for later. And then, you know, the girls just hearing the same story in a different way. I think it's been really cool and really nice to have that like relevance. Uh, you know, we were talking about King James, learning about him in, in our story of the world, and then they brought up King James and Tuttle Twins, and the girls immediately are like, oh, King James, oh, wow, da da da, I know about King James, he, this, and, you know, and then they start spouting out facts and what have you. So anyways, that has been going wonderfully for history so far this term. Okay, moving on now to science. Um, and for science, we are currently still working through Gather Round's botany unit. Now, this is not going terribly. It hasn't been awful or anything, but it's just not the most exciting unit to pick up. Um, and I think a lot of it, honestly, is probably just to do with the fact that my girls already know a lot of this information. They've been out planting seeds, sowing seeds, you know, they've been, they've tilled the ground, they've pulled weeds, they've watched things grow, they see how things sprout, they understand um, how flowers work and how pollination works and how leaves get energy from the sun and like they, you know, they already know a lot of this information so I think they've just been kind of finding it a little bit boring. I also feel like this would have been a much better unit to do in springtime. I think that um, if you're planning to do this botany unit or if you're looking into it, definitely plan to do it in spring. So right now, if you're watching this from the Northern Hemisphere, do it now or wait till spring next year because this needs to be done in springtime. I think that in order to really, you know, put the two together, this needs to be done when your kids are out in the dirt sowing seeds and watching things sprout and grow. Um, you know, we've already done that for the year. We're now in fall. And so, um, yeah, this kind of just doesn't make any sense to be doing right now. But anyways, we're halfway through. We're 10 lessons in, which is where I wanted to be at this point in time. So, I mean, we'll probably finish it, but I just, it's not the most exciting, inspiring um, unit. And you guys know I love Gather Round. I have nothing against this. It's just that for us, it's stuff that we really already know. So, yeah, that's what I have to say about that so far. Um, and now moving in to our enrichment subjects. These are group things that we do all together, but they're not like formal school subjects. Um, this is just stuff that I really like to teach um, and that we usually do during our morning basket time or on a Friday morning when we have our enrichment morning and we spend a lot longer doing morning basket time. 
So the first thing I have here is our Shakespeare story. So again, in our family group subjects video, I talked about how I had picked out our six Shakespeare stories for the year and we were going to be reading a new Shakespeare story um, one every term. And now these books, I've talked about these quite often, they're from Easy Classics and all they are are child-friendly um, Shakespeare stories. So it is the play but it's condensed into a child-friendly easy to read story form. Um, so yeah, I love these books. They're fantastic. However, with this, for example, The Comedy of Errors, I feel like this needs to be in a play. Like, it, it, my kids, I think the only one who actually listened to this and was really able to follow along was my oldest daughter because it went way over the heads of my younger two. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. I think this, it is, this is a funny story. I, and I can see how people in the 1600s would have thought it was hilarious as well, watching it as a play. But yeah, my younger two just could not follow what was going on. Um, uh, we have yet to watch the play. I have saved quite a few here on YouTube, but I just, I want to make sure that they're totally appropriate before I um, share them with my children. So yeah, we're still waiting to watch the play, but we definitely will. Um, and that's honestly all I do with our Shakespeare study. We just read our Shakespeare story. We'll, you know, discuss it a little bit and then we'll watch the play. And that is just what we're doing at the moment with these. So yeah, I enjoyed the comedy of errors, but only one of my children <laughs> enjoyed it with me. So that's that. Next up from Charlotte, from Simply Charlotte Mason, I have our poet study and our poet for this year is William Wordsworth. And do you think I've been reading this at all? <laughs> I have probably got this out and read it um, maybe three times this past term. Um, and it's just that a lot of his poems are very long and a lot of his poems do not rhyme and a lot of his poems do, do not make a lot of sense and so my kids just are not overly interested in William Wordsworth work William William Wordsworth's work <laughs> um however I have been reading poetry from a different poetry book which I didn't bring in here um but yeah the the poetry book I've been reading from it's just a lot more like child friendly I guess and most of the poems rhyme and are about animals and stuff like that. William Wordsworth stuff is kind of not so um yeah I don't know we're, we're gonna keep trying with this I'll keep incorporating it you know once a week or something like that where I can but yeah it hasn't been going the best so far to be honest with you guys. Okay next up I've brought in here my backyard birds book uh, I talked about in our group subject picks video that we were going to be doing our own unit study on New Zealand birds this t this whole year and this has been going so well I have loved doing this so much with my kids my kids have loved it so much and it is so so relevant um, the two birds that we chose for this term were a piwaka waka New Zealand fantail and um, a tui which is another native bird here in New Zealand and honestly we learned so much about these two birds that we never knew um, and the really really cool thing is that yesterday for our afternoon thing on yesterday was Saturday my husband's away so I was kind of trying to think of what to do with the kids yesterday and we decided to go on a forest walk with the dog and while we were out in the forest we actually saw both of the birds that we had been studying this term. We saw a pair of tuis, we're assuming that they were a couple, and then we saw several fantails that were fluttering around us, and it's, yeah, it's just so cool. And fantails in particular, they get super close to you, they're really not afraid of people, and they just come right up to you and will like chirp in your face and stuff. <laughs> um, not in an aggressive way, but you know, they'll just come super close and just chatter away. Um, yeah, it has been so cool. I learned a lot about these birds that I did not know about. Um, yeah, and so I, yeah, the bird study has been going really well. Um, and what else did I wanna say? I think I'll add more birds to our list. I had only planned to do two, two birds a term so kind of one bird for every three weeks. But actually, because we spend so long talking about the bird when we when I first introduce it, because my girls are so interested, uh, we'll sit there and talk for like an hour and a half about the bird the very first week. And so come like the next week, 
you know, the second week and the third week that I've allocated for that bird, there's really not that much more to talk about. Um, so I think I'll add more birds to our roster and maybe do four birds a term instead of just two. Um, and then that way we can learn you know, more about more birds as well. So that's been going wonderful. I highly recommend doing a bird study of your own. This is really not hard to do. I, I just, you know, I've picked our birds. I'll read from um, a couple of different books. For example, this one I got specifically because it has pretty illustrations. For example, here, oh, oh and all my coloring sheets just fell out. For example, here's a fantail. And then I've got a couple of other reference books, a book that sings um the you know the birds songs and things like that and then we'll just watch youtube videos um and then we'll make it a point to kind of go and look for the birds outside as well so that was really cool seeing those birds yesterday okay um oh yeah and here and then i also have my girls fill in some facts and things like that about the birds as well and then i do have coloring sheets that some of them like to do yeah anyways so that's just how I've been doing that. Super easy, super straightforward. Okay, moving on now to Simply Charlotte Mason's laying down the rails. I love this curriculum. I, I think it's fantastic. I think it's such a great concept, but it's just been really hard to get to this, this term. Um, I've picked a new, sorry, the dog just came in here and he's probably planning on hopping up behind me. Okay. Um, um, what was I saying? I picked a new habit. You're supposed to do a habit for six weeks and then move on to a new one. So I picked a habit for each term. Um, however, we just have not done our habit very well. This, this term I picked kindness was our first habit. This is what the book looks like. And it's very simple, straightforward stuff. However, sometimes, for example, here, this is where we stopped was lesson six. Um, and the reason I didn't read it is because it's like this huge thing. <laughs> um, and it's kind of disheartening when I've just read, you know, poetry and our French stuff and we've just played Professor Noggin and we've just watched World Watch and, you know, we've already been sitting down for 40 minutes doing morning basket time. And then I pick this up and I see that I have this huge thing to read and it's just not very inspiring. Yeah, so that is why I've kind of been stuck on that and we've just not covered this well, but I'm definitely going to persevere with it and see how we go because this is something I really, I want to use and I want to do it well, but it's just really hard to find time to incorporate it right now. So I don't know, but I'm going to persevere and I'll let you guys know how we end up going with that. Um, and then next up, another one of our enrichment subjects, also from Simply Charlotte Mason, is our artist study. We are studying Johannes Vermeer this, uh, this term and next term, I think. No, I've allocated three terms for each artist. I've got two artists for this year. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> hey guys. Anyways, yeah, this has been going amazingly. Like our artist study notoriously has been one of the best things in our homeschool. We did Leonardo da Vinci last year and we only had one artist for the whole year. Uh, but this year I did choose two and Vermeer has been going fantastically. And actually uh, what was really super cool um, is that a couple of Fridays ago, I had planned for our afternoon activity to go to a place called the Lanik Castle, which is actually the only castle in New Zealand, and it is not far from where we live. Um, and so I had planned a nice outing for that afternoon. Now on Friday morning, when we were doing our enrichment subjects, we got out our artist study, and we were trying to decide which artwork to study that morning. One of my daughters really wanted to do um, a different one, but I suggested we do the milkmaid, which I'll put a picture up here so that you can see her. Um, and I was looking at the milkmaid and I just thought, you know, this really reminds me of the Lanark Castle. And we're going to the Lanark Castle today, so I think we should study the milkmaid. And so we did. Um, and, you know, it was beautiful. It was great. We hung up on the wall. She's still there now. Um, and then we went out to the castle for the afternoon and in the gift shop, the craziest thing was we saw a picture of the milkmaid in the gift shop of the Lanark Castle, which was wild. I like, and all the girls immediately, they were like, oh my gosh, look, it's the milkmaid. What, what is Vermeer's the milkmaid doing in here? <laughs> um, and it's, you know, the other adults who, who heard that, they were like, what, these kids know Vermeer, the milkmaid? 
<laughs> um, yeah, it was it was really cool, a super cool connection, and I just ironic that we had studied that painting that morning. Um, and I was like, oh look, I told you, yep, I knew there was something about that picture that reminded me of Lalanet Castle, and they obviously feel like it does too. Um, anyways, so yeah, this has been going great, and I'm really excited to um, continue with it because it is something that we thoroughly enjoy doing in our homeschool. Also, as far as our enrichment subjects go, I am teaching my girls French here and there. I don't have like a set curriculum that I am teaching them from. I'm a fluent French speaker, so my main thing is just reading to them and singing songs. And we have been doing that most mornings. Most mornings, I have been prioritizing that. Um, we've got like a French bingo game, so we'll play French bingo. I've got some French uh, card games, so we'll play those. And just generally talking to my kids in French. Um, you know, for not for just a few minutes during morning basket time. And I think they're really starting to get the hang of it a little bit more. So carrying on with that, but I don't have any actual curriculum to show you guys in regards to French. Okie dokie. Moving on now, you guys, to my daughter's independent subjects. Um, again, they all have their own videos with their independent work, which are all linked down below if you want to know what, um, what I chose for them at the start of the year and how it's going now. So first off, for my oldest daughter, for language arts, she is currently working through the Good and the Beautiful Language Arts level four. Um, she started this halfway through last year, so she's, almost, so she's almost halfway through it. However, she's found this really boring this past term. It's been quite uninspiring for her. Um, she really enjoys the art, the artist study. She really likes doing that. She likes the writing portion. And what else did she tell me she likes? And she really likes the readers. She's been really enjoying the biographies that go along with this curriculum. However, everything else is just really repetitive. Like every lesson, it's like, correct this sentence. Here's some new homophones. Um, put the proper punctuation in here. It, it's in every single lesson is pretty much I identical. I think it's also been hard because my middle daughter is doing, um, the level three, the language arts level three, and it, because it's newly revised, it's a lot of fun. The level four is honestly quite boring in how it's laid out compared to the new level three, so I can kind of see how my oldest daughter feels that way about this curriculum, but hey, look, we're going to persevere through it. She should be finished with this, I believe, by the end of next term, and then she'll move straight into the level five, so she really doesn't have much longer to go with this. And, you know, we're just going to persevere with it because there is a lot of beautiful, good learning that comes from this curriculum. For her math, she is doing the Good and the Beautiful Math Level 4, and she has been loving this curriculum. We love the Good and the Beautiful Math. It's fantastic. Uh, she's been really enjoying the... If I can find one really quick here. Um, she has been really enjoying the lessons that go along with this. So every lesson has a video that goes along with it. So she just scan the QR code and then um, it plays the video of the lesson. And this is amazing because I am honestly not even teaching her math anymore at this point. It's totally independent. She watches the video, she does the lesson, and then I, I go through it with her afterward. If she hasn't understood something, I obviously will um, mark everything, make sure she's got it all, <laughs> you know, it's all solid, and that, that's it. And this has been just been going wonderful. She does this four days a week, um, as well as her language arts, and it's just been going fantastically. So yeah, this has been a big thumbs up for us so far this term. Okay, and then finally for her, um, we have been doing the Gather Around Homeschool U.S. Government Unit together, just her and I. We do this on a Friday afternoon. Some of the concepts are a little bit hard to understand. You know, learning about the government isn't the most riveting thing, but she's, yeah, she's been enjoying it nonetheless. I think she, she didn't really like learning about all the different types of government just because it's, I don't know, it's, you know, it's not very relevant for a 10 year old. Um, but she's really enjoyed like the, the early US history and learning about all of that. And this coincides really nicely with where we're at in story of the world right now. So that's been good um, to, to see. And her and I just do this together. I do not have my other ones join in on this. They can certainly sit in and listen if they want to, but this is just her and I. 
Okay, moving on now to my middle daughter's work. She is eight years old. She'll be nine in June this year. Um, for language arts, she is doing the good and the beautiful. Mm, I want to. I was about to say math, but the good and the beautiful language arts level three, and this has been going really well. It is a bit of a step up for her, which I knew it was going to be, but I also know that she's very capable of doing it, and she certainly is. Um, I think what has been difficult is that this is taking us a very long time to get through. It honestly has been taking at least 45 minutes to an hour to get through one lesson of language arts every day. We do this four days a week, and it's taking a really long time. Some lessons you have to do work from this book and then you also do work in your spelling book and then sometimes you also have to read a whole chapter of the reader. Most lessons you have to read a whole chapter from the reader so it has been a lot. There is a lot of work um, in each lesson and it is slightly overwhelming for her but I think I'm I'm just you know, we're only six weeks in, we're still kind of working out all of the kinks, and I'm trying to really build up her independence and in being able to do this more independently. She kind of really likes me to sit there and hold her hand the whole time, if you know what I mean. She wants me to read every single thing to her, she wants me to read every single instruction and all of this and that, and even with the independent work, She's like, no, mom, you have to help me with this. Mom, you have to this. I don't know how to do this. And uh, yeah, so anyways, that's been kind of difficult, but I, I think I'm just trying to cultivate um, more independence in her when it comes to this curriculum. It's amazing. It's, it's su such a solid language arts program, but yeah, it's just taking us a really long time to get through at the moment. So that's what I'll say about that. Uh, she really enjoys the readers as well. We're in um, the first book, which is Timothy uh, of the 10th floor or on the 10th floor. And she's really enjoyed reading that. For math, she is doing the Good and Beautiful Math level three. She loves math. She's really thriving with this curriculum. But again, this is a big step up from the Good and Beautiful Math level two, which she did last year. This is a big step up. In fact, um, the last lesson she did was four pages long and that is that's a lot of math that is a lot so when you combine this with this this is like two whole hours of her working independently and that's after we've already done science or history or um you know all of the enrichment and all of the like that's it's a lot it's a lot for her to try and retain um so again just really working on cultivating independence and um yeah <laughs> yeah but anyways that's it's going well otherwise it's just taking a long time for us to get through which you know we're still we're ironing out the kinks um and then also for her on a friday afternoon her and i do this together this is the growing up with god unit this is the level one from gather around homeschool i did this with my oldest daughter last year it is fantastic um, and I really enjoy doing this with my daughter and she's been learning a lot from this as well. Okay, and finally moving on now to my youngest daughter. She is six years old um, and this is her work. So for language arts, um, I shared in her curriculum picks video that I was kind of planning on using both of these and seeing how we went. Um, I didn't really go into the year with a super solid plan for her but I was confident that some one of these would help me get the job done. Um, so I started off the year using the Good and the Beautiful level K. Now we got up to about lesson eight and by lesson eight she had cried about four days in a row when I got this book out. So at lesson eight I was like okay we need to stop this. This is obviously not working for her and where she's at. And um, yeah, I needed to put this aside. So that is what I did. I have not gotten this back out for her since then. Um, and instead I have just gone back to all about reading level one. And I honestly should have just stuck with this from the beginning, but here we are. You live and you learn. Um, this is the program I use to teach my middle daughter how to read. It is a fantastic program and I, I don't know why I ever thought about not using it, but here we are. Um, my youngest daughter, I had started this with her last school year. However, she just was not retaining 
pretty much anything um, she just wasn't retaining much at all so I kind of stopped it I slowed down and I just ended up putting it aside and that's when I decided to give this a try and see how that would work but that didn't work um, anyways she got up to about lesson 16 with this last year um, but when we went back to this a few weeks ago I decided to just totally start her over and so we've now gone back to the beginning of All About Reading Level 1, and it has been going amazingly. And she now, she's six years old, and she now is actually retaining stuff. So, you know, I think so often we fall into this trap of feeling like we have to teach our kids how to read right now because everyone else's kids are learning how to read, and I don't want my kid to be behind, and this and this. And I'm so guilty of having fallen into that trap with my daughter and I feel guilty that I um, had pushed this on her when she probably wasn't ready for it. And yeah, so where she's at now, at six years old, she's actually learning from this now. Um, she's retaining stuff, she's able, she's, yeah. <laughs> she's able to read her CBC words. She's, yeah, she's really, really thriving with this curriculum now, and we are certainly going to be carrying this on. I think, too, what was difficult with the Good and the Beautiful Level K is that it's such a different style of learning compared to All About Reading. And because we had already done All About Reading last year, I think she just wasn't interested in what this had to offer as far as like learning what your vowels are and learning how to put two letters together and that type of thing. She had, you know, she was already reading words when she was doing volume, when she was doing level one of All About Reading. So yeah, she just, she really didn't like this. So yeah, that is going wonderfully anyways. And we're going to be carrying on with All About Reading level one for her for reading. And for handwriting, she is doing the Good and the Beautiful Handwriting Level 1. She loves this. We only do two pages a week. Super easy, super fast, and she does enjoy that. And her handwriting is actually coming along beautifully. Um, along with that, I also have her write me stories on a Friday afternoon during our enrichment stuff. Um, she writes me a story one time per week. You know, just um, this kind of gives her the independence to practice some of the things that she's learned. Uh, in the week and to practice her letter writing and all of that and she really enjoys this. This is just a notebook um, that has a space for a picture and then some big lines for her to write her story and that's been going really well. She really enjoys writing me stories so that's something fun. And then for math she is doing the Good and the Beautiful Math Level K. And again same story with the reading. I started her on this when she was still like four years old. <laughs> and I made a full video last year on how she just was not ready for this curriculum and how I instead wanted to introduce math concepts to her through playing games. So that's what we did a lot of last year. And only now do I feel like she's actually ready to retain information from this curriculum. Um, and again, that mom guilt, like I should not have pushed her or, you know, had, yeah, anyway. You can't go back and change anything, but here we are. She is now doing super well with this and is actually retaining the information, which obviously is the goal when we're te trying to teach our kids. Um, she just recently had her first unit assessment and she did so, so well on her unit assessment. She was so proud of herself. She was telling everyone. She was super proud to tell her dad. Her grandparents were here that weekend. She was super proud to tell them about it and the whole thing. So yeah, this is going super, super well now and she is just, yeah, thriving with this curriculum, which is awesome. <sighs> okay, you guys, that is all that I have to share um, in regards to curriculum. I feel like this video has probably ended up being a lot longer than it needed to be. That concludes our term one update, how all of our curriculum has been going, how our extracurriculars have been going, and just generally how this term has gone so far in our homeschool. It has been going amazingly, and I'm really excited to just take a one-week break and to chill for the week and, um, yeah, regain some strength so that when we get back into our next six weeks that we're all good and ready to go and fresh and the whole thing. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. As always, pop any questions you have down below, and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye! Mm -hmm.